Hey everybody, it's Henry W. Steele, and this is the sixth video in the series of videos I'm doing about Gann's 1927 novel, The Tunnel Through the Air, or Looking Back from 1940. In this video, I'm going to pick up kind of where I left off, talking about the number 52. We discovered a few things, and one of those was that uh, there were 52 days between the San Francisco earthquake in April and the um, day Robert Gordon was born in this story, which is June 9th, 1906. Now, the first thing I want to point out to you, which you've probably already figured out, is that 52 is the number of weeks in a year. There's 52 uh, times 7, or 364 days in 52 weeks. So what's really going on here is Gans showing you a period of time that is one-seventh of a year, which is a natural time period, which basically just means it's a period of time that is derived from the cosmos or the planets or nature itself, because that's pretty much where we get all of our time measurements from, is from the sun, the moon, the planets, and so forth. Now if we look over here, back in the forward right here which is as you can see printed where it's actually shown right by you know chapter one there's no blank page between it we see that robert or not robert but wd gann talks about three times and seven days he talks about three and seven there's the law of three and the law of seven is probably in my opinion what he's referring to kind of slightly veiled there but I'm going to, in a little bit in this video, show you how Gann used one-seventh of different time cycles, or at least another one. I'll show you that there's another one here directly connected to the San Francisco earthquake that we'll, we'll, we'll look at here in just a second. But before I do that, the number 52 made me think of something that I wanted to do. I wanted to show you guys this. This is a scanned... Uh, the Ticker and Investment Digest magazine, a scanned copy of it that's a free resource that you can, the link is in the description box down below of the video, so you'll be able to click on that and you'll be able to see the actual magazine scanned in that Gann's uh, article, his 1909 article was in. And if we look, <coughs> excuse me, this is the November issue. What they did this is volume five, number one. So what they did was they scanned six issues into this one particular document online. And they only show us the um, cover of this magazine, the November one, but they pretty much all looked, from what I can tell, the same. Just had the different, uh, whatchamacallit, I can't think off the top of my head, the different articles and such that were inside on the cover. But anyway... <clears throat> One of the interesting, basically what made me think of showing this to you guys, and what I want to show you here is the very first article has a picture of the person the article is about. Now this is November, of course. We're going to go all the way down to the beginning of the December issue, because I want to show you a couple of things. The number 52 is what made me think of this to show you guys. And the reason is... <clears throat> Here is the contents for December of 1909. The way they laid out these magazines, um, I just showed you November, which was issue one, and that's had, that started at page number one and ended at like page number 50. Instead of starting issue two at page number one, they start issue two where they left off on the page number from issue one, which is pretty interesting, right? So what that means is that, I'm going to scroll down, here is the picture of W.D. Gann. You know, that's a pretty famous picture, now you know where it came from. Just like in the, the picture I just showed you in the November issue, the December issue has a picture of the person that the head article is about, because W.D. Gann had the first article in the magazine. We see that this is volume 5, number 2, or 52. Pretty cool, huh? That's basically these 52s I'm about to show you that show up in Gann's article is what made me think of putting this in here in this video. Uh, not only is it volume 5, issue 2, there's the first 52, but the very first page number that shows up in the magazine in his article is page 52, which is pretty cool. And of course, I mean, this is the actual article itself, so... Pretty much, I'm assuming that most people who have studied GAN have only ever seen a scanned copy 
or a retyped, reprinted copy of this article. So being able to look at this, you can see everything the way it was actually laid out and all that. And I know a lot of the copies out there actually have mistakes in them, so you'll be able to see what was actually printed. So I've always thought that was cool. But the third 52 that uh, is kind of hidden, in quotes, in this article is the fact that there is 52 paragraphs in this article slash interview. I always thought that that was pretty interesting. But... Uh, like I said, I will leave the link to this in the description so that you guys can have that and look at this. But getting back to the tunnel through the air here, let's go ahead and go forward a few pages here in the book. And let's see, on page nine here, we have Robert Gordon's mother talking to Robert. It says, a few nights before you were born, I had a very strange dream. I thought I saw San Francisco and Los Angeles destroyed in two days by some war machine. And that one of my sons came near, came near losing his life there, but was saved afterwards, and so forth and so on. Now I bring this up because we're actually, in a little bit, going to go to the part of the book that that's in. That this came true in, so to speak. But here on page 11, I wanted to show you Bobby was not kind to be discouraged by obstacles and later his ingenuity overcame his, the difficulties. Basically what he was trying to do was build a bicycle that could run on the water, right? I mean, you can drive bicycle on the land, of course, but the bicycle, this part here on page 10 and page 11 is about a bicycle he's trying to build to ride on the water. Okay, and basically without going into too much details, I personally think the bicycles are simply talking about synodic cycles or a third cycle that's created from a lesser and a greater cycle or you could say a greater and a lesser cycle you have to have a major cycle and a minor cycle or one that's bigger and one that's smaller and then you calculate a third cycle from those two cycles now that brings me to the second thing that I'm linking in the description and that is a synodic period there we go, synodic period calculator. And if you're not familiar with what a synodic period is, I uh, suggest that you go ahead and look it up. Basically, what it is, is let's say you have uh, one planet that orbits around in a certain amount of time. We'll use um, Mercury for an example. Mercury takes about 88 days to orbit the sun, and Venus takes about 225 days to orbit the sun, right? The synodic period is a about 144 and a half days of these two planets and what that means is if you start where these planets are conjunct it takes 144 days for them to become conjunct again and at that period mercury the slower one will have moved more than one of its whole orbits but venus the faster one will have moved less than one of its whole orbits so anyway Having a synodic period calculator comes in very handy when working with the tunnel through the air, I found. So I'll put a link to this calculator in there. And this is the actual mathematical formula, which isn't too hard to figure out. So if you'll memorize this, you don't need the actual calculator itself. Although it's still faster to have the calculator. So let's go back to tunnel really quickly. Okay, so so far with this particular video, we have 52, which is one-seventh of a cycle, or the cycle of our year, the cycle of the sun, or which is really the Earth orbiting around the sun. We have the possibility of these bicycles being an indication of synodic cycles. And we have, like I just showed you, the me uh, mention of San Francisco by his mother. His mother told Robert Gordon when he was young that she had a dream about him. Now if we go to page 200 and I believe it's 293 here. There we go. Page 293. This is um, the part of the story many years later where, let's see, Robert Gordon was captured by the Japanese at one point. It says, as soon as they had landed with him, his mind went back to the days of his youth when he had built his first bicycle to ride on the water. 
and when he had read the Bible and talked about the wars to come and made plans for his great airship, he recalled the dream his mother uh, had, which greatly disturbed her. She told him she dreamed that she saw San Francisco destroyed by some terrible machine, and that one of her sons had nearly lost uh, his life there. Okay, so we have San Francisco mentioned again here. If we read further, we see that he said he thought of how his mother had told him about his oldest brother losing his life in San Francisco in the San Francisco earthquake. So on page 293 here, we have a direct reference back to what happened on the first page of the book, which was where we basically, if we look at the first page, we see that um, Gann tells us Robert Gordon's born and then right away connects Robert Gordon's birth to the death of his older brother 52 days before in the San Francisco earthquake, right? Now, let's bring our calculator up here as is very helpful when studying tunnel. We're going to change this to our date calculator again. We're going to calculate the difference between these two dates when it's mentioned here and when it's mentioned in the first. We already know the first date of the actual earthquake is April 18, 1906. But now we have to find a date for this happening right here. And if we turn the page back one page number, <clears throat> excuse me, we see that this happened in September of 1930. But at this point, we don't really know which part of September of 1930. Now, once again, right here on the very beginning of chapter 26 on page 290, we see that Gann's talking about San Francisco and how the destruction of San Francisco was greater than, let's see, the destruction was the greatest in history, much greater than the earthquake in 1906. So Gann is directly connecting the earthquake of 1906 to, to, to September of 1930. And then he does so right there at the beginning of the chapter. And then on page 293, he makes it personal again. And has Robert Gordon remember this, okay? He has uh, Robert Gordon remember the fact that his mother told him about the death of his son. So now we know that this is September. So we're just going to put September 1st for now, uh, 1930. And we're going to calculate the difference. We see the difference is 24 years, 4 months, and 2 weeks. So what's so important about that? It's 8,902 days. And of course it could be, you know, anywhere from 24 years, four months, two weeks to 24 years, five months and two weeks, because I just used September 1st here. But if we go to the actual calculator and multiply 24 by 12, because that's the number of months in a year, we get 288 months. If we add the four months from right here, we get 292. And if we assume this date is probably, let's say it's September 18th, just to make it a full month. That's 24 years and five months. So that would be, we have to add one more month right there. That would be 293 months. So from the earthquake in April of 1906 to September of 1930, there's 293 months, and it just happens that this is mentioned on page 293. So I'm of the opinion that this is very significant. It's like a big clue, right? Sure it is. Now, if we go to the synodic period calculator, we can try and figure out what's important about 293 months. Now... Let me do this. Let me pull the calculator back up. Now, we know this is directly connected to the San Francisco earthquake, and we know the timing of Robert's birth and the earthquake was one-seventh of a year. So if we take 293 months and multiply it by seven, assuming that it's one-seventh, that 293 months is one-seventh of something, we get 2,051 months. That's a long time. So if we divide it by 12 to figure out how many years it is, we find that it's just short of 171 years. Now, why would that be important? Well, it just so happens that if we figure out the synodic period between Uranus and Neptune, Uranus is 84 years, 
Neptune is 165 years, we discover that the synodic period between the two is 171.1 years. So this is a direct correlation, in my opinion, of what's being shown here. Gan connects the earthquake to this time frame and from the other time frame. He does it twice. He does it right here, letting you know this date is what he's looking at. He does it again, connecting it to Robert Gordon again on the page number that exactly matches the number of months. That's one seventh of a synodic cycle. And he's talking about his bicycle to ride on the water right again, right here, right? <clears throat> now, if we go back, I'm going to open astrolog here and we're going to go back to the san francisco earthquake here in 1906 1907 1906 april april 18th okay so what we have here is the opposition of uranus and neptune very very close to within a degree so Gann is giving us a starting point here. The starting point, of course, is the early date. And that just happens to be the opposition of these two major planets right here. So, in fact, in the 1909 uh, Ticker and Investment Digest article, Gann gives us a date in there at one point in time that gives us essentially the conjunction of Neptune and Uranus. Uh, I'll let you study that and try and figure out where it is, or you can watch some of my other videos, and I think I reveal it in one of those from a while back, maybe last year. It's in one of the videos where I do the uncovering or unlocking the 1909 interview, but regardless, he's giving us a starting point here, and the starting point is, uh, uh, I guess you could call it an astrological aspect, or you can call it an astronomical position, however you want to look at it. So we see that this cycle right here, this uh, synodic cycle or bicycle, a cycle that requires two planets, is in a water sign. Well, half of it's in a water sign. Part of it's Earth and part of it's water. So that's probably significant to the fact that he was trying to ride his bicycle on the water. But that's beyond the scope of this video because it's already getting pretty long. So... <clears throat> we can take this information and do several things with it. Number one, we see how Gan was connecting some stuff, right? We see how the earthquake was used to connect the concept of one-seventh of a time period, or the 52 days, to one-seventh of a synodic time period. And we see how Gan used a page number to verify an amount of time, because the 293 page number right here just happens to be the number of months between the two occurrences of the San Francisco earthquake where it was referred to as his brother losing his life and we have the bicycle here indicating to us that it's probably a synodic cycle that's going on and after doing some math we discovered that it is a synodic cycle that's most likely being pointed to here and we discovered that it's Neptune and Uranus which means Gan was most certainly, in my opinion, using Neptune and Uranus for his calculations, at least some of them, in this book. Okay? So, we're almost at 20 minutes now. We're actually right at 19 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and I will talk to you again in another video.